we entered lockdown towards the end of March. That's when the government declared the lockdown in India. Uh, April was very slow, very, very slow because people were just adjusting and it was more like a stay at home kind of a stuff. Uh, I think from mid-May onwards, we started seeing a lot of activity. Coming to the existing customer base. So I am of the strong opinion that an existing customer is the most important customer. So it's like they say, you know, it's better to have a bird in hand than having two in the bush. So first protect the bird which you have in hand and these are critical times. So this is the time when actually the customers also were looking up to us that, okay, we've been a customer with you for maybe one year, two years, three years, some even the seven years. Uh, you know, we are sitting at home, our licenses are due, but the process is not in place. We can't give you a purchase order. What do we do? So we've covered every customer and I can you know, endorse it in bold saying that every of Kaspersky who was an existing customer has been protected on their renewal. We did not charge them for any extensions that we did. We have taken purchase orders three months, six months late in spite of giving them continued services for over the existing point. No purchase orders till the licenses were made active. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm talking a bit business language, but just to give you the, the crux of it, none of the existing customers were put on stake. The services were up and running 100% with or without the purchase order. That is committed. That is the kind of commitment which we had. In, in fact, that helped me the most because there were customers who were not non-Kaspersky customers facing their renewal challenges with their existing providers where maybe from a business angle or maybe to make the best of the moment, uh, a lot of other organizations were being rigid in offering extended services or extending or whatever. I mean, I don't want to comment on that. Those I mean, my existing customers gave me references of those customers. I gave them free licenses till the time things move. So I've given 30 days, 60 days free licenses. So more than 85% of those customers actually ended up buying my stuff. Because one, they appreciated us for, I mean, we helped them from nowhere. It was out of thin air. They never thought Koi Kaspersky will come and then Kaspersky will give me free license for what? I'm not even a customer. But it gave me two advantages. One, uh, they were... I mean, that gesture was so, you know, so well accepted that almost 80, 85% of my customers, I mean, those prospects actually became customers because they just liked the gesture. Second, they got to use the tool for maybe one month, two months, even three months. I, I still can recall a few names. Three months, customers are using my tool free of cost. It's like a POC for them. So what? Once they've used the tool, they like the tool, they say, okay, what's the harm in continuing? Why uninstall now and put the old licenses back? Just give them the purchase order and let the licenses continue. I mean, it actually gave me extra business. It gave us better mind share. It helped my partner community tremendously because I am an OEM. I don't meet all my customers, right? My partners are doing the legwork. So if my partners have done that service, the partner gets extra brownie points. That, okay, this partner bought another license, he put that license and now the partner is helping me out. So it was, it was a very, very, uh, I mean, we didn't think in those terms when we took those initiatives, but when we started seeing the response, it was just that, you know, sometimes good deeds help you back. I think this was an ideal case where, you know, just helped us grow our business. Mm -hmm. And, and if you look at the structure, it is no different. Uh, it's same tier one, tier two, uh, channel methods. Uh, so rather than innovating on those methods, we've rather been investing time of getting closer to them. So one of the best thing, if I could say that this pandemic bought because of this work from home situation, uh, there was an sudden uh, acceptance in doing anything and everything online. So, I mean, I've been in this industry for a very long time. I mean, close to 19 years now. But um, never has been there a time where you tell a customer or you tell a partner that, you know, uh, let's do a video call and we'll sort it on a video call. Never. They all, I mean, we come from a background. Let's meet up and let's do it. So even if I have to train the channel, 
I need to physically go into their premise uh, or call them to a conference room or call them to my office, you know, allocate one guy and then he will do this three hour session. Then next week we will do another session. This time things were different. So two things which worked, people were willing to invest the work from home time in learning. Second, they were willing to do it on a video call. So the amount of reach that increased for us, if I, if I remove the pandemic, it would have been impossible for me to do the kind of trainings, to do the kind of connect. I think it is two years time or maybe three years time, the amount of work which we would have done, we managed to do it in this eight, nine months. So, so my connect with the channel went up exponentially to the limit that genuinely we were investing late hours in the night just training people and the more we connected the more response we got second thing uh, the incentive part for a partner i think comes last if you look at cyber security cyber specifically the advanced cyber where we talk about anti apt we cover we talk about malware detection spyware detection responding to alerts which are being created by these complex tools. I think today what the channel needs most is the confidence that if the channel goes out and sells something to the customer, the first thing that the channel himself will be able to support the customer when there is a problem. And the customer believes in that channel only, the one which is confident of selling what they are selling and the questions in cyber security are always about, okay, once the installation, first, who does the installation? Have you done this before? After the installation, how are you going to support me? In terms of you know, managing the alert, managing the alerts, uh, the updates, patches, uh, the red flags that will come in, who will manage that? Because the customer does not have field force today, specifically the mid-market or the smaller enterprises. So when we are training the the channel in such a way that we are empowering the channel. So since everybody is sitting at home, they are willing to invest that time. So the amount of training and certifications that we've done has been exemplary. Second, supporting the channel. All these channel partners, like you pointed out, are small channel partners. They don't come, you know, like those big national system integrators who have, you know, worldwide presence to do business. These are small channel partners. But if you look at the resource availability, no matter how small the channel partner is, he will always have uh, the luxury of having one or two or three servers extra which are with him in his ecosystem. All we said was, just give us those servers. We will give you those licenses. We will create small, small labs for you at your level so that your resources can actually physically play with the tools learn the tools on free basis, take the trainings from us and play with our tools. So because of that, the reach went very high, certifications of channels going very high. Since the certifications were going up, the grading of the channels kept going up. Since the grading of the channel went up, automatic the backend rebates that they were earning with us went up. So it was like a blessing in disguise. Like I said, we gave licenses to customers who are not even our, our customers. So these kind of interaction with the channel, with the customer, everything coming together, scaled our business tremendously high. The demand was there. We were there at the right time, doing the right things, enabling the right people. And everything stitched up in a very, very seamless way. So the channel today is so trained and so well informed about the tools that we have and how to do and what to do with those tools, that the channel is capable of presenting it to the customer themselves. So we don't talk to all customers, the channels are pushing it all over. We actually replicated this channel model with the consumer model as well. So the way our consumer model works is we have a master distributor and he has regional distributors in every state. And those regional distributors have their respective sales guys who go out and sell to uh, the small time resellers and the end users. So the first thing, we did one session every 15 days and three 
sessions or four sessions in two months with the regional distributors with the product. So this was hardcore product training that why they should sell a, a, a Kaspersky antivirus than selling some other antivirus. So if you look at this market, at least when I entered, I realized that, you know, an antivirus is just being sold as an antivirus. So if a consumer comes, he said, okay, you, I want to buy an antivirus. It is on the wheel and fancy of the distributor or the reseller to tell them, okay, you know, I have this in stock. So buy this or, you know, buy Kaspersky because Kaspersky backend is giving him a scheme or something like that. The reseller never thought about why I should sell a Kaspersky beyond the schemes and whatever financial benefits she gets with us or with any other distributor or partner. The fun part is, today we talk about child protection, selling antiviruses. We talk about VPN protection. We talk about how an end user can save passwords and keep his passwords protected by using an antivirus tool. How uh, gamers will benefit by using typical Kaspersky because Kaspersky tools have almost 15% uh, speed has gone up in terms of detection and all that. So a gamer is uh, CPU hungry because they play a lot of high-end graphic games. So any utilization of CPU you know, actually creates a lag in the game. So these kind of informative sessions we did with our regional distributors, resellers, we did small, small, uh, small webinars, like 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. It's do not get too heavy and people are not bored with the webinars, but they understand very quickly what are the four, five, six points that they need to position. So today my reseller market is, I can proudly and very confidently say is well informed about my product and can sell my product by positioning the features rather than just selling an antivirus. So today, Key selling features for me are child protection. Child protection. So we have specific features where uh, there can be a parent and child app where the parent can actually monitor what the child is surfing on the net. How the child can be protected on the internet when he is using your laptop or doing his digital glasses and all that. And how uh, you know certain errors on the child's machine can trigger to the parent's machine and the parents will know that you know the child is not on the right website or. You know, so many other things that are there as a part of those features. Second, uh, we all are doing online transactions today because of the digital uh, world that has been created. So can we offer features which gives them uh, extra protection when they are doing a banking transaction? Yes, we can. So today, if someone tells me that, you know, you should buy an antivirus which can give you protection when you're doing your banking transaction, would you be interested? My answer would be yes, obviously. Because we, as a consumer or as a normal uh, citizen, I think the awareness on cybersecurity is at an all-time high. So, so we are here, definitely trying to use a different method for consumer. And the focus is on awareness. And the focus is on features. Antivirus is, is legacy. What more can you get from a particular brand of antivirus which you are going to buy, which is going to give you protection over and above the antivirus that you are anyways going to buy. That is where the focus is. Because the customer or an end user today, a normal citizen who is, who is not a techie, who is, who is maybe an elderly person, uh, who is a child, who is someone in his 50s who is not played with, uh, or someone from a tier 2 city who is not that well exposed to cyber threats, then these are things which are you know, exciting for him. And at that point in time, if he has to pay a premium to get those services, I think we are doing well on that. When you look at B2B, the investments that have gone in are in different technologies which have scaled my business higher. So when I'm looking at my B2B business, my frankly, if you ask me, and since we are talking on this, my antivirus business, typical antivirus, which is more, it's actually become a commodity for us. It's not that the antivirus business has gone up. My overall business from threat intelligence has gone up. My overall business on server security has gone up. Uh, storage protection on server security, so SAN and NAS solutions, those have gone up. Okay, my services business of incident response, compromise assessment, consulting, that has gone up, which clearly shows that there is a different method that the enterprises are investing today. Second, all my 
uh, SMB business and enterprise business on the licenses part, which were using my endpoint licenses. I think a majority of them have upgraded their licenses from the previous versions that they had. So if they were on a base version, they have gone to base plus one. If they were at already base plus one, they've moved to base plus two. My EDR consumption, the endpoint detection and response, and my anti-APT tools have, have been at an all-time high this year. So these kind of tools are not the kind of tools which a normal ba person buys for his laptop because these are network-driven, uh, organization-driven, work at a different protocol which does not follow the laptop protocol. So that's how I could actually differentiate and say, okay, this is different, this is different, this is how it works. And then I got down to, okay, what is it that is triggering uh, sales on the consumer side and then we could understand this correlation. So we've been doing this brainstorming for a few months now and now the picture is pretty clear. I think the overall enterprise space, like I said, acceptability has gone up drastically. So uh, I would say the, again in enterprises, if you look at businesses, there are a lot of business who are already at a mature stage, well aware, well informed, well equipped. But a lot of manufacturing and the non-typical IT space that I spoke about earlier, those kind of investments have gone up. Uh, OT discussions are going up a lot, a lot. But obviously the decisions will happen over a period of time. Um, the IT, ITES has invested, in fact, even the BFSI for that matter, has invested a lot on predictive technologies, that Intel platforms, um, Threat intelligence, dark web monitoring, and all those kind of stuff. The other, if I can actually pinpoint on uh, certain aspects of the technology which we do, I have seen a major surge and a real major surge in people focusing on encryption based technologies in the large enterprise space. Because I think finally there is a realization and acceptance that encryption helps them the most because in, in a situation of a data theft or a breach or a data exfiltration happening unknowingly from someone's machine, if the data is encrypted or the machines have been encrypted, uh, a lot of information becomes meaningless when it, it gets breached because Whenever he gets the information, he gets the information in the form of a scrap file or it's all dots and numbers and random, uh, you know, designs coming to them. So they don't get to read what they have stolen. So that particular part of technology in the technology driven enterprise verticals has seen a lot of search for us. Okay. A lot of large business opportunities have moved in that direction where they bought the entire tool just to ensure that the encryption piece is taken care of. From a Kaspersky perspective, we are continuing and uh, we will heavily invest in the threat intelligence capabilities and empower our threat intelligence more and more. Um, OT security again is going to be the prime focus because a lot of investment, because that is a rather untouched and unexplored area. And there is not too much expertise in the market right now in that area. And with the, if you, if you take up the history of the last two years, major power grids, major oil sectors have been heavily, heavily attacked. So there is definite uh, threat, which is in that direction, which we know we can cover and cater. So those directions are going to work. IoT is something which we are focusing a lot. So I think 2021, we'll see a lot of IoT coming from our side. And of course, anti-drone, uh, given the need of the hour, I think anti-drone is something which we are going to look at a lot. Uh, we, we see sustained growth and consistent uh, business opportunities coming to us in the EDR and the anti-APT. So I think from the IoT perspective is something which we would be talking about. In my perspective, I think EDR is going to be the new normal. Uh, from an enterprise perspective, I think everybody will move in the EDR direction and it is just going to be a must have from the endpoint perspective. Server security is going to be prime. Uh, server security and security on the cloud. So these are a few handful technologies which will be the main point of discussion for 2021 and will extend well into 2022 as well.